Well, David here, back here at the California Showcase, came last year, came the year before. This thing continues to be dynamic. Um, the numbers are good this year, maybe a little bit off, but nonetheless, this is a group of kids. I think it's a fantastic program for high school seniors to get a last shot. And what better way to come out with a group of guys like you and Coach Donahue and many other names and get a chance to get instruction from you guys. I'm here with Jim Everett, and people should know who this man is, all right? And if you don't know, he's a former Rams quarterback, <laughs> Purdue quarterback, Rams great, had a wonderful career. I remember you, okay? I'm getting older. I know where you come from. You look great, by the way. You look like you can go out and we'll sign you tomorrow. You <laughs> could do that, that, man. You look great. You look Thank great. You, Appreciate the time. I want to get your opinion. You've been here for a little bit. What do you think of this event and what you've seen so far in some of these kids? Well, I think the California Showcase is one of the premier events around ever. You look around, and I'm looking at Steve Berline. I see all the NFL yeah. guys. I see coaches from around all different levels. But Terry's brought this. There's 400 kids here basically today, mm -hmm. and 100 of them are going to get scholarships. Right. So, I mean, those are 100 scholarships are kind of found. These guys are good football players. They might not have had the exposure. They might have been injured. There might have been, but it's another chance for them to go to maybe a different school that didn't have the recruiting budget yeah. to go out and find them. Yeah. You know, and just look at Southern California. We got four Division One major schools, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of schools from back east that don't know about these kids. That a hundred of them will get a chance to go to college. I get. I come back and I talk to the coaches every year, and it's so gratifying because uh, you remember that quarterback that we had last year? I'm like, yeah, he was good. I don't know why he was – well, I don't know why Division two or Division three he was even available. Yeah. Um, but I, I kind of follow up, see how they're doing, see, mm -hmm. see what this – and it's really kind of cool. But, you know, it's just fun to see good athletes, good scholar guys saying, hey, I need to be matched with a program. Maybe it's not a full scholarship. Maybe it's a partial. Right. I know that half the kids here are economically disadvantaged as well. True. So True. this is a last chance for a college opportunity unless they do military or some other type of factors, which is fine too. Um, but I think Terry does a great job. He represents UCLA, he still does. Yeah. And, and all, the, all the coaches out here are fantastic and the kids come out. We're not here to give them something. We're here to showcase them. Yeah. Show them to a coach. For, uh, and say, you know, what does he do really well? And I'll talk to the coaches afterwards. And say, that's that was the question I was going to have for you. Have you had some conversation with the coaches from the colleges that are here to evaluate these kids? Absolutely. Have you had a chance to talk with them a little bit? What are their What's their perspective? Well, each coach is coming in with a specific need. Okay. At this point in the juncture, they know, hey, I need a defensive lineman. I need a cornerback. I need a quarterback. I need, you know, they're, they're looking specifically for positional things. Okay. So they'll come to us, like let's say they're looking for a quarterback. Sure. And I'm working with, you know, oh, I'll work with all the quarterbacks at the start, and then we'll break up in four groups. Um, I will then have a chance to be able to see, you know, where, where is this guy at mentally? Yeah. I can see where he's at physically. Let's yep. showcase what that is, and let's challenge him to see what he can do. But let's showcase the things that my I don't know all the coaches schemes sure so this guy it would be impossible to know yeah but yeah. This, yeah. they may be looking for a multi-purpose athlete to play quarterback they don't need the the six foot five you know in the pocket passer that's not what they're looking for so I just want to showcase if this if this quarterback can roll out we're moving well, I'm okay. going to show that okay. if this if this kid has a big hose on we're showcasing that okay um, a lot of kids what I find now is is there's a lot of the um, shotgun spread offense yeah. um, so we'll go through because like Jared Goff with the Rams had to do had to learn the three-step five-step drops mm -hmm. we'll go we'll introduce that okay. but if someone's comfortable in the spread shotgun or pistol whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. we'll highlight that for them because okay. there's a lot of that in in college as well no, no doubt and you feel like there's enough time to, in the little bit of time that you have throughout the morning workouts to get some of these specifics in to really give a chance to showcase as you say, these kids and their talents to these potential colleges and college you can, coaches. You can spot what they do well pretty okay. quick. Okay. And the coaches can see it. But what, you, what I might do is maybe give some hints to maybe the things that they aren't. Um, I've had discussions with kids at these camps that are on all different levels from <laughs> Uh, mentally what we're reading what we're looking at safeties they might not have had that much exposure sure. especially the quarterbacks about what we're looking the defense on three deep one deep okay. I go this will give a hint okay this is you know right these are some of the little tips that you might do that might be an aha moment okay 
Um, just the slightest bit of movement, that safety comes down. Like, stays oh, high my, my yeah. coach never really talked about ever okay. looking at that level. Okay. You know, they might be looking at linebackers. I'm like, well, let's take one more and let's look at yeah. strong safeties and yeah. three safeties and yeah. where that corner has his hips. And, yeah. you know, we're all detectives in certain ways, but if we can figure out, you know, this, that slight bit of advantage, um, right. I'm sure Bill Belichick and McVay had those <laughs> those things going on in the Super Bowl, well, they did. which was really fun they to did. watch. Yeah, um, it was. And it was, was. checkmate Belichick. And it, it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's great to hear you say that because you know, talk to people post-Super Bowl and they're like, oh, that was boring. Not for football guys it was, no. right, who really understand the game and what was going on between the two okay. minds. So you look at match. it. Yeah. was a chess match, yeah. defensive at that, and yeah. Wade Phillips should get as much credit Absolutely. as anybody. Absolutely. It was a one-drive game. Right. Seriously, right. and and other, everything else that was played out um, as you know, did, could Brandon Cooks make those catches? Could yeah. that could have changed the game? What if no you know the interception by golf when they did a blitz adjustment? You know, yes. why didn't they go the other side? What you know, all these different <laughs> little things. But it was all it was all premeditated, yes. and Belichick ran at the right time. But it was yes. when I was sitting there watching it. Um, Belichick went to a quarters defense, and people are like, quarters defense. I yeah. know there's three deep, there's two, yeah, quarters, four yeah. deep. Um, you yeah. should be able to run against that, but Gurley wasn't running. So. Okay, right. Anyways, it was amazing. It was a strategic yeah. uh, uh, exclamation point. That's excellent. And so this is the kind of thing some of these young men should probably be aware of because the college game will confront them with oh. these challenges. Will they not? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I remember recruiting Jeff George. I go back to my time. Okay. He came to Brew, and he was so much more advanced than we were at the time. So, wow. the level that they're coach, they're coaching. A credit to all the high school coaches yeah. are, are are getting higher and higher and higher. The bar raises every yeah. year. Yeah. So there's there's certain things though that the high school has not been exposed to for college that they will be asked to. We will introduce a couple of those concepts. Excellent. If that sticks, Excellent. great. If it if it does, there's there's you know. Yeah. Kids that are going to have a chance to continue on, and that's the great thing about this. Certainly is. And one more question, last question for you. You know, you've been you've been all over, and you've had some great experiences. Obviously, great career. But how much has recruiting changed significantly since your day and present day? And what would you say to the folks and to the young men and the parents who are trying to prepare their young men for that next level experience? Well, we didn't have huddle. Right? Yeah. Everyone, every kid now has a huddle. <laughs> right. So if you look at the digital technology. Usually every kid will have a internet connection somewhere, somehow, in contact. So yeah. the, the touches are a million more times than us. I know sure. uh, Coach Saban with Alabama, he talks to a recruit every day. Okay. Um, so the amount of touches he's getting either through you know, the internet, through mm -hmm. emails, through mm -hmm. uh, messages, through other, other okay. things, that has skyrocketed okay so I think the communication we talk about McVeigh I call him the best communicator on the planet okay. that's where he's different okay I think the best communicators okay. get an advantage and okay. that means all the way from high school coaches communicating with their kids okay however they do it however okay. they touch it that those things have changed we, I might have talked to Jim Young a handful of times okay. but I know these kids getting recruit, recruited now he was at Purdue when he recruited me mm -hmm. I know the kids now have it plethora of just opportunities to touch with not only their okay. position coach with what they're expecting what they're doing here okay. what they should be working out what they should be eating what should be i mean yeah, it's, 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 over. it's overwhelming um yeah. so my advice to the kids is you know put it in its box mm -hmm. you're still a student you're still a human mm -hmm. you're still um you're not immortal you know have your have your fun mm -hmm. but keep it keep it in the realm you will still do, even if you're a football player, you will still have stuff after life. Yes. After your football life. Yes. We all retire. I don't care if you retire at 18, <laughs> 21. Right. Maybe some of us are a little luckier, 35. Um, you look at Tom Brady, maybe he'll retire when he's 60. It's but. unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it's unbelievable I what he's doing. you got to admit. Yeah, he's up yeah we all have to admit that. But yeah. at some point, it's going to end for all of them. But yeah. For all of us. So just enjoy it. Enjoy your teammate. Have respect. Have have. Um, your parents are there to support you yeah. and respect them. There will be times when your parents have to, will tell you things. Yeah. And I know it might not be the uh, thing you want to hear, yeah. but it's a thing that they've had a lot of experience, even with time, even if they haven't been in their shoes. But yes. give the people around you some respect. Listen to your coaches. Okay. And um, enjoy life. And, and 
don't take everything so serious either. The guys that the guys I've been around when I went to the Pro Bowls were well-rounded. They were the best students, they were the best athletes, and they had a sense of humor. Okay. Okay. Fun to be around, and they were all considered leaders. So don't be afraid to be a leader. Jim, thank you. I, I think that that message and those words resonate as much as what you're teaching them on the field, and that's why I wanted to get your perspective because of your wealth of experience, where you've been and what you've done, and it's gotta mean something. So as that comes across to these young men who will see this, the parents who will see this, coaches who will see this, I think that resonates, and I appreciate that message. I'm sure they will. Jim Everett, former Rams quarterback, David Hill here with HSPN Sports from the California Showcase, kicking off once again here in the spring. Kids all over the place, and we'll get some footage of that pretty soon too. David Hill with HSPN Sports. See ya. <laughs>